Okay, war with Iran. More war, more war with Iran. Here's some great stuff. Take a look at the right. All for all my videos, you ought to be looking at the information and stuff because I got links and all that stuff. I don't just talk and not have the stuff I'm talking about linked up down there. So first things first, Iran and Russia replaced the dollar with national currency and trade exchanges. This means war, because our central bank. It's not. I mean, they fooled us so well about it. So oh, it's about heroin or oh, it's about oil or oh, it's about this or that, oh, it's about regime change, oh, it's about bringing democracy, it's dollar hegemony, and it's not even dollar, it's FRN hegemony, right, it's Federal Reserve notes, we don't have a dollar, we've got the Federal Reserve note, this thing is debt, thing does not, is redeemable for nothing, this is, this is, right, I mean, unconstitutional currency circulating, everybody takes it, 1964, they took the silver out of, they, well, they started phasing it out in 64, and by the 70s, there was no silver in our currency anymore. Okay, the main thing is the main thing. It's the central banks, damn it. It's the Federal Reserve. This is the main reason why Ron Paul scares these guys to death. Because he's waking the people up to the understanding that we cannot have a private central bank printing our money for us and loaning it to us at interest. Which can't have it. But now that they're, you know, replace the dollar, or replace the FRN, uh, there's going to be war. Just like Libya, just like, you know, he wasn't, he, did, he had no central bank. They have a central bank now, but he didn't. Iran, no central bank. Ooh, they got nukes. Saddam Hussein, he was wanting to settle trade for oil in euros and gold, not FRNs. Ooh, he became enemy number one the next day. How long are you guys going to get fooled by this stuff? This is not, these are not, it's, it's a few men protecting their own interests in the FRN and the central banks. And it's simple, right? The drums of war they're beating. Panetta admitted that Iran is not developing nukes. I got the link for that here, and you can watch video. They're not developing nuclear weapons. Iran says uh, uranium enrichment site runs under IAEA watch. Hmm. I mean, again... Our policy is counterproductive. Our policy of war and belligerence is counterproductive. Because here's a very simple thing for you to get through your heads or understand. Right? There's a saying that dogs rally together against the wolf. The moles could be overthrown and ran by their own people because just like in the USA, the people are very sick of their government. Right? We've got a 9% of approval rating for our Congress. And unlike the USA, the mullahs have a very real threat of war on their doorstep. That's us which they could use to suppress dissent, just like they do in the USA with the Patriot Act and the NDAA, blah, 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 right? Okay, the mullahs know this. They love us because as we, you know, saber rattle, it actually consolidates their power. If we had a policy of peace and trade, would the dissent be able to rise up and not be hampered by, you know, being called whatever they call them over there? They probably don't call them terrorists. They probably just, you know call the dissenters unpatriotic, and, you know, American sympathizers and all this stuff. And so they can't rise up against the mullahs because the mullahs have a very effective tool to suppress dissent. And it's us in our, you know, banging the drums of war constantly for them. I mean, just like I'm no fan of Bush by any stretch of the imagination, but if there was a real threat, like, you know, guys were coming across the border, whoever, you know, phantom menace you can make up, let's say it was the Chinese just for fun, right? The Chinese ain't coming, you know, Russians ain't coming, nobody's coming, we got guns. Right, they're not coming. But anyway, just just pretend that it was the Chinese. Well, you know, we're all gonna get out there and fight the Chinese and, you know, leave our differences behind us. Right? It's simple. Occupy Wall Street, anybody, all these other guys, they were definitely but read what the founding fathers had to say about what happens when you you know how easily it is when we have a foreign menace and how easy it is to use that menace to suppress dissent to, you know, bring tyranny at home, right, foreign wars, this is why they wanted entangling alliances with none and trade with all, because they understood that the war machine could definitely cause problems at home, even back then in the 1700s and the 1800s, right, the early birth of this country, our founding fathers knew what they were talking about, right, so according to the pundits, the policy of peace is the dangerous policy, this is future speak to the maximum, right, I mean, no, 
The policy of peace is peace, and it's not dangerous. The policy of war is dangerous. Do you understand that we could go how, I mean, the Chinese and the Russians have both said you attack Iran because they've invested quite a bit of money with them and built infrastructure and trade and oil and so forth. You attack Iran, you're attacking us. The Chinese have made it as clear as they can. So have the Russians. So we go to war in, in Persia, it's not going to be like going to war in Iraq. We go to war in Iran, and we got some big dogs also to contend with. Our military understands this. You know, there's rumors uh, that, uh, that, you know, that the, they're, let's just put it this way. There's rumors of mutiny at the Pentagon. It's come to this. How true that is, I don't know. But, I mean, we can't afford another big war with Iran. And this is what they do every time, right? They create financial crisis, loot the country, and then try to get us out with war, where they make even more obscene war profits. They've done this five or six times. They've done this repeatedly. Are you falling for it? Now, I sure wish that the Iranians would be uh, smart enough not to be trying to develop nuclear power. right? Even if, like, you know, aside from nuclear warheads and being able to use it as bombs, just nuclear energy in the first place is just plain ridiculous. I know people that run nuclear plants in Idaho, or, well, used to run nuclear plants in Idaho, and even they say it's the stupidest thing we do. Nuclear energy to heat water is the stupidest thing humans do. Fukushima and Chernobyl have, should make that absolutely clear. And even then, the mainstream media is still trying to sell it to us, right? Because who owns them? Who, I mean, ugh, it's crazy. Now, you'll see a link down there to Cold Fusion. And I can all I can say about Cold Fusion is Pons and Fleshman in Utah 21 years ago had that thing working, and that was duplicatable about 30% of the time, and 70% of the time it failed. Now, scientists should have been looking at why does it work 30% of the time and why does it fail 70% of the time. But instead, they just tried to, you know, sweep the whole thing under the rug and call it, you know, crazy talk and, you know, too good to be true and impossible and so forth. But now, mathematics and physics is starting to explain how it is possible and how it works. Too many scientists are now seeing that, oh, what the problem was in that 70% was that the palladium and the metals that they were using were not pure. And when you purify the metals, and then there's a whole conspiracy theory behind that, uh, how is it that so many of those people got, you know, impure metals? But when you purify the metals, you get success. And you can watch YouTube videos about it, and you can read blog posts, and you can read scientist after scientist showing that they're getting more energy out than they put in. And we have this guy, the ECAT, going on over there in Italy, Rossi and so forth, and we could be doing, you know, cold fusion instead of nuclear energy. All of this suppression, all of this greed and graft and this, you know, power grab by the few is really starting to have negative re repercussions on the whole planet. Our energy, our wars, our money, I mean, humans are now suffering because of the greed of these very few. Time for a change, guys. It's as simple as that. Now, again, all we got to do is work hard. Got to work harder than we already are. And we can make change. And people are waking up in droves. They're waking up. I mean, it's amazing to hear people talk now. Right? I mean, it, it's happening. So now it's time to work harder. Wake up more people. Get more people involved. I hear it all the time now. This is I've never been politically active in my life. I've never given a candidate money in my life. Ron Paul's waking people up. They fear that. So now's the time to put the pedal to the metal, right? Now's the time, like, it's like, you know, when you're breaking the sound barrier and the plane's getting red and there's everything shaking and it's getting red. And, okay, everybody else died and blew up. And then this one guy named Chuck Yeager said, all right, it was now or never, and he pushed harder. Boom, broke the sound barrier. That's where we're at with Ron Paul. Go to work, guys.